I haven't been here in a few days. Today, I just want to talk to y'all about President Trump's ass, of course. And I also wanted to talk about the Black Wall Street and Juneteenth. Unfortunately, some of us in the northern states don't truly understand about Juneteenth. What happened? Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing all slaves. Well, the slave plantation owners in Texas wanted to get one more crop. <laughs> they just wanted to get one more crop of free labor from us. So they did not inform the slaves in Texas that they were free for two years. For two years after we have been set free. Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. During this time, segregation was on. They didn't want us to drink out their fountains or use their bathrooms or go in their restaurants or, you know, any of these things. They just wanted us to work for them for little or nothing. Hey, Walter. They just wanted us to wait to, I mean, Lord Jesus. They just wanted us to work for them for little or nothing, right? So, of course... Um, we had, uh, airplanes, we had our own hospitals, we had our own restaurants, grocery stores, whatever it was to make a community we had. Now the significance of this is every black dollar that was spent went around seven times before it went out into the white community. That means it stayed in our community at least seven times. And we grew in such a way, right, that was amazing. Why are they trying to say we, we can't build stuff, we can't do stuff? Let's be clear. History has shown that we definitely build shit, right, if we left the fuck alone, right? So, of course, we went off and we did our own thing. Well, what ended up happening, this young brother that was 19 went and he was going to the Booker T School. I believe that was the name of it. And he decided he would rather work to get some money. So he decided to go into the white areas and shine shoes. Because during that time, you would get, you know, a dollar, five dollar tip, you know, and that was considered a lot of money because we're talking about in 1921, right? Well, after a hard day's work, he'd get on the elevator with some white girl. And the story is either he tripped and fell into her, right? Of course, she hollered rape. Let me just stop right here and say this. White people, let's be clear. Black men don't have a history of raping, raping your women. White men have a strong history of raping black women. Let's be clear. And a lot of y'all ain't never even served a not, not nan time. Not, not a drop. But getting back to the story. She holler rape. Then their newspaper wrote up something in the newspaper about lynching and da 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 da. The brothers in the community, y'all want to think that we're passive, but we're not, right? The brothers in the community, they got together with their guns and went to the courthouse because it wasn't going to be no lynching of this young bro black brother, right? The police said, no, we got this. We're not going to let him be lynched and da 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 The brother was like, all right, although there was white men all around, white men everywhere trying to get to this young brother. So the, 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 the brothers in the community went back home and then some more shit, right? So they go back 
And of course, some white guy say, well, what the hell you got that gun for, boy? And the brother said, I got it and I'll use it if I have to. And there started the riot. Okay. These people went in, and it was all based on jealousy because, you know, we were living good and all our money was in our own community. So we was living real good then, then, right? And there was some envious things like, I dare these, I don't use the N word, but, but to quote them, I dare these uppity niggas, niggers, I dare them have more money than I got. So you had all these people, all these white men coming into our community, and before you know it, they shooting people. They burning up all of our businesses. Sound familiar? They burning up all of our businesses, and they doing all this old crazy bullshit, right? By the time it would end it, matter of fact, they even had airplanes dropping gasoline down on the houses to further make this fire, right? To burn down this whole community. So then, you know, black folk, you ain't going to stop us, right? That's our land. We're going to go ahead and we're going to rebuild because you know we'll rebuild some shit in a minute, right? Because we, we don't know nothing. If we don't know nothing, we know how to struggle. So we're going to build our city back up. But of course, the white folk made it complicated. Once again, they made it complicated. When people was trying to build their houses back up, they put in these housing ordinances where you couldn't, there was no possible way, you know, that you could be, rebuild. So there's this young brother, he was a lawyer, and he went in and he challenged the housing situation, right? And he won. So they started building again. So by, but then the next thing they did, they brought the railroad <laughs> right through our shit, right? And they literally, literally, literally stopped our progression. <sighs> hey, Newt, how are you? So, um, after that, you know, we tried to rebuild the whole situation, and then they lifted segregation, and then, of course, black folk went into the white stores and started taking the money out of our community and putting it in the white person's community and made this grand country, right? Now, President Trump punk ass, yeah, I called him a punk ass, this motherfucker, right, he want to, he wanted to, but some people done bagged him up off of that. But what he was trying to do is have his first, uh, what you call, rally in Tulsa, Oklahoma on June 10th, which is June 19th. The significance of that whole thing, where he's coming from is, let me show these black folk, I don't give a fuck about y'all history. Right? Just like... Not all white folk. I ain't talking about all white folk. I am not talking about all white folk. I'm going to say this again. I am not talking about all white folk. I'm talking about the white dumbest. Again, we're not going to call them the white supremacists because there's nothing supreme about these motherfuckers. We're going to call them the white dumbest. They are the dumbest motherfuckers on the planet. But anyway... This motherfucker want to go and hold a rally where during the, the I forgot to say this, during, during this time when they burnt up the Black Wall Street, right, is they said only 300 black people died. However, in the cemetery, they was bringing black bodies by the boatload, right? This is what they were doing to us. Right, And my whole purpose of discussing this with you was a couple of things. One, to make you understand your history and make you understand that Juneteenth is valuable to us. That's, that's like our celebration, right? 
two, to show you that Trump is a racist motherfucker, period. But we already know that. But I'm talking about to the white folk that don't understand, like the little heifer that's on view. Oh, and that Candace, that Candace Owens. We're going to talk about her in a minute because she's a traitor to her people. Talking about she waving her hand. Oh, I'm engaged. I bet you engaged to a white dude because ain't no brother going to deal with no bullshit that's coming out your motherfucking mouth. You stupid and you ignorant and you letting these white folk use you against your own people, stupid. Who was that? John Hendrick Clark said this. He was like, you know, I've met a whole lot of people with degrees that know absolutely nothing. But I know a whole lot of people without degrees that know every motherfucking thing about themselves. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Them little certificates, them little degrees and all that, that's a tool. That's a tool. Because you can still be a stupid motherfucker like this girl, all on TV, talking about there's not racism. And all you see is all these videos of black people being killed by the goddamn police. And you gonna sit up there and be a yes ma'am for these crackers, for these white folk. I didn't mean to call y'all out y'all name because I ain't on that. So President Trump, right? He's saying, well, it don't have anything to do with Juneteenth. You know, it's going to be a perfect time. I'm going to be able to show and tell black people all the things I have done for him. Motherfucker, you ain't did shit for me. You ain't did a motherfucking thing, right? Even that little stimulus money, that's part of our motherfucking reparations. We want some more. You owe us. Let's be clear, President Trump. That Candace lady, y'all know who I'm talking about, Candace Owens. This chick, she on TV, wherever she can get some damn attention, talking about, oh, there's not racism. Oh, no, there's not racism. Girl, just by the mere fact that you saying that shit out your motherfucking mouth proves that there's a lot of racism and self-hate going on in our community all due to slavery. White women, let me have a conversation with you. Because see, you have a vagina just like I got one. You have children just like I have children. How dare you clutch your purse when a black man walk past your motherfucking car? I dare you, when a black man get on a damn elevator, you sit there and, and have a tissy fit. Let's be clear. Black men don't have a history of raping you. Y'all have a history of raping us. Let's be clear. Stop with the bullshit. Let's just get real, right? Hey, Brian. Y'all have had a history of raping us. Period. All of these different colors that we got in our community, right? And understand, I, I love black people, all of us, all shades, every color. If you got one drop, you good with me, right? But this is how we got there. Because white men was raping black women. White men was raping black men. Brothers, young brothers, the sagging pants shit that you need to stop doing, that shit come from slavery. Because you'll get the gay white guy, right? You'll get a gay white guy that like, that like men and he will make you literally wear your pants down low so he can look at your butt and figure out how, when and what day he's going to come and fuck you in ass. Let's be clear. I am so sick of white women thinking that all brothers want y'all. That's simply not the truth. Let's also discuss... 
Since everybody want to be on the black person's side all of a motherfucking sudden. Because y'all shit was burnt down, but y'all didn't even think about the black Wall Street that y'all motherfuckers burnt down and didn't nobody give a fuck about. What kind of shit is that? I guess that was okay. That it was our shit burning down. I don't agree with the looting. I don't agree with burning. And that's pretty much over now. I'm just having a common motherfucking station. This Owens lady. I don't understand. See, there's something wrong white women when I, as a black woman, can't even come into corporate America with nappy hair. And nappy is not a bad motherfucking word. It's a beautiful word. Let's be clear. I have to change the way I look. What God gave me naturally just to fit in corporate motherfucking America. Is that right? Is that right? That's not right. On no level. I should be able to wear what God gave me naturally. I shouldn't have to go and spend two or three hundred motherfucking dollars on some fake ass hair just to fit in. Hey, Joseph. I shouldn't have to do that. And we got sisters out here to literally think that's what they need to do. Sisters, don't get mad at me. You wear your hair how you want to wear your hair. Go on, do your thing. But I'm just going to tell you the history of what the fuck it is. All this love. Fake ass, bullshit ass hair. Your hair grow long. And even if it don't, it's old motherfucking K. Because we ain't got to be like them. God gave us beauty in our own right. We are the original women. It's time for us to stand up and wear our crown proudly. And this Candace chick. This bitch is... There I go again. She crazy. Something wrong with her. Intellectually. For her to... And look, kind of find out. She said, oh, I've never experienced racism. Well, why did you sue somebody based on the racist shit? And when? Why you do that if you never experienced racism? So in other words, your blackness is okay for your benefit only. But when it comes to the benefit of the whole country, you can't stand up for us. You a traitor to your people. Somebody send her this. Send her this. You a traitor to your motherfucking people. The other day I saw a video of a black cop whooping this brother's ass for no fucking reason. You a traitor to your people. I don't understand it. You a traitor to your people. And I know we living all in America and everything is all right and da 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 da. Everything is all right just as long as they putting drugs in our community and then they can step back and say, oh, look at them, they just a bunch of drug addicts. When the FBI planted the motherfucking shit in our community to begin with, to quiet down the Black Panther Party, understand what I'm saying. Black Lives Matter. Right now, at all y'all protests in certain areas, they got federal planes, right? That's, that's picking up on your data on your cell phone right motherfucking now. They always send the FBI and the CIA and all these people to destroy our movements. Hey, ja Jacqueline. They always have. They always have. And we need to be aware of that. Because the game don't change. Only the names change, baby. The game never change. History always repeats itself. Now, yeah, there's a movement going on, right? But at the end of the motherfucking day, if they had to choose a side, do you think it's going to be your side they own? Right now, they're saying we need to 
defund the police stations. Now, by all right, yeah, we need the police. You know what I'm saying? We do. Because, you know, some of us will look crazy. Ain't no police around. We're going to have to all, you know, strap up. Because there's going to be some fools out here. So we do need them. But they're trying to come up with a solution to this. Right? And, the, and when they say defund, what they're saying is take some of their money instead of giving them all this money to kill us, literally. Take some of that money and put it into some of these community programs. The first thing a motherfucker, first thing a person like Candace would say, well, everybody have opportunities in America and it all depends on you. Oh, shut up. Shut the fuck up. That's what you do. Just shut up. Sometimes just shut the fuck up. You don't need to talk. Keep your, keep your shit to yourself. With your stupid ass. They using you, girl. They using you. You don't know when somebody using your stupid ass? With your highly educated ass? You don't know when somebody using you? President Trump using you. Stupid. But racism don't, <laughs> racism, racism is not like really bad here in the United States. Every day at any forgiven time on the internet, you can see black man after 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 black man, black woman, black little boys getting killed, getting harassed by the motherfucking police. And your dumb ass sitting up here talking some bullshit out the side of your neck that you have no idea about. You need to go and read a book for real. You need to go and research your own motherfucking history for real. Because if you think, right, with that, all that dark skin your motherfucking ass got, if you think for one minute that these motherfuckers done totally accepted you, you're bullshitting. And then when they show you, that they don't give a fuck about you. What you think? You gonna run back to us after you done stabbed us in our back? Mm-mm, baby. Mm-mm. No, baby. Mm-mm. No, you're not welcome no more. You're not welcome no more. You're not. Because you're a traitor to your people. And you brainwashed. That's slavery. That's what that is. You still enslaved. You like, excuse my expression, black people, but you like the house nigga. You, you, something wrong with you. Something wrong with you. You forgot what Harriet Tubman said. I'm not free until all my people are free. Stupid. And instead of you reaching out to help somebody else that needs some motherfucking help, what you do? You get online and say some disgraceful bullshit out your motherfucking mouth. When the whole world is shining and telling your stupid black ass That this shit is going on. What, we're all, the rest of the world is imagining everything and you the only motherfucker right? <laughs> is that what the fuck you think, little girl? Little girl. Somebody send this to her. Because see, I'm going to keep it real. Fuck the bullshit. You a traitor to your motherfucking people. You got the same melanin in your skin that I got in mine. They fear you just like they fear me. A genetic annihilation. Let's be motherfucking clear. Come on, people. We should all boycott that hoe. Oh, there I go again. Sorry, y'all. But she done pissed me the hell off. She done pissed me off today. Because it makes no sense for your own people to turn on you like that. Let's get back to the Black Wall Street. Segregation messed that up. I know some of y'all say, oh, segregation was a great, beautiful thing. Right? I know that's what y'all say. But actually, it wasn't necessarily. Right? Because if they didn't let us shop in their stores, it's all right. We went and got our own goddamn store. Fuck you. We ain't got to shop in your shit. We can spend our money somewhere else. Now, 
We the only people on the planet to go give our money to everybody goddamn else while we in our own community suffering. Right now today, I'm about to go and pass out food to some people right now. And it needs to be more of us. Because if we don't look out for ourselves, who's going to look out for us? We need to start putting our money in our own communities. Stop driving past a brother's store or a sister's store to go to the Arab store. Because see, they had their part in slavery too. Y'all do know that, right? Over there in Ethiopia... When the white folk was coming over to Ghana and places like that and stealing and kidnapping black people, where over there on the upside, close to Ethiopia, the Arabs was coming in stealing black folk. So they're not innocent, all y'all Muslims out here, while we trying to run to their religion instead of celebrating our own religion, because we got our own shit that we need to celebrate. Candace, what kind of shit is that? I am so disappointed in her. And her mama should be too. Unless she was adopted and raised by some white folk and that's how she got her money or whatever. And we're not even going to speak on the adopting of black children. Well off black folk. Well off black folk. Well off black folk. There's no fucking reason... Why our children should be, should be being raised by someone else other than us. We just going to have a conversation. We got some work to do. I keep telling y'all, July 7th, blackout day. We need not to spend no money. We need not to spend no money with these motherfuckers. Because apparently they don't quite get how much money we bring to this country. And for those that don't know, the president over there in Ghana, he said, well, black folk, American blacks, if y'all don't, if y'all not happy there and y'all not being treated right there, y'all can come on home. I'm just saying. Maybe we need to start a migration back home. Because this shit here, Ain't working. Now the babies, I'm proud of them. They out trying to make a better life for us. Amen? They out there doing what they need to do for us. And I appreciate that. They need some guidance from us though. And we need to give it to them. And we need to give them our support. We also need to give our black businesses support. Black business owners... The reason why we don't give you support because you don't know how to appreciate the money that we bring to your motherfucking business. The way that you're doing business is not always right by your own goddamn people. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Sisters, there's no way if you got to go and put this fake shit in your hair, there's no way why we should be going to these damn wig stores and hair stores and we ain't own none of them. Do you know how much money I had? I don't have any children, but I was dealing with this dude and he had a daughter and she wanted her hair done. I was like, okay, no problem. I, by the time I finished, this girl hair cost me $500. Are you fucking kidding me? When your own hair will grow just as pretty. I don't understand it. We need to support our own. We need to keep our money in our own community like they did in the Black Wall Street. See, our ancestors taught us and showed us the way. But because we're taught to celebrate your ancestors as paganistic, we won't celebrate them. We won't go and get that energy that they have for us. We won't go and get the lessons that they have for us to deal in this world today.
Now, I'm not trying to preach at nobody. I don't, all, I don't have all the answers on no level, right? But I do know we need to support us on both sides, right? On both sides, as the consumer and as the business owner. If I'm spending my money with you, black business, then you need to respect that and not treat me in a disrespectful way. And y'all know what I'm talking about. We all know what I'm talking about. Don't act like y'all don't know. I'm just keeping it real because y'all know I keeps it real. We need to start trying to figure out how to open up our own banks. Now, I'm not good with numbers. That's not my damn area. But I know that there's some bros and some sisters out here that can. And when it happens, we need to support them. That's important. We need to be able to leave our children something if we're going to stay in this country. Other than a bunch of racist bullshit by the white dumbest. So anyway, President Trump last night got on and tweeted. Well, because of my African-American friends. You know, I've decided to change the date of my rally from June 10th or June 19th to June 20th. First of all, motherfucker, you ain't got no black friends but that damn Bill Carson and that whole uh, Candace Owens. Let's be clear. And if any black person supporting this motherfucker, you're a traitor too. It don't have anything to do with whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. I don't give a fuck about that. I don't care. It has everything to do with us and this motherfucker being a racist. And he's implementing programs that's going to stop us from doing what we need to do to make a better life for us. Candace sitting up here talking about, well, you, you know, you just got to pull yourself up. From your bootstrap. But Martin Luther King told you, how can I pull myself up from my bootstraps that I never had the boots to begin with? Because of this system. Excuse me. Because of this system. We need to start organizing. And every black community in my area any area, but I'm just talking about Cleveland, we should have some type of black organization that we can go to in every community. And we got a lot of black communities in this area. It's good black folk doing good positive things, but you don't hear about it. We need to do certain things, y'all. Right now is the time. Anybody want to join me and let's get it moving? I'm good with that. I know you still got to work. You got the babies. You got this. You got that. And you got this. But we ain't free unless we all free. If I'm hungry, if you eating and I'm hungry, how can you be comfortable? How can you be comfortable with that? Because this society, this system is not set up on the communal. It's not set up like that. It's set up on the individual. I'm going to survive regardless of everybody else. But that's not the way we are as black people. We always thought about the whole village. If one person in the village didn't have anything to eat, damn it, 
Everybody went and took, made sure that person had something to damn eat. We shouldn't have black people starving. Especially when we already know the system is set up against us. And stop telling me about, oh, there's plenty of opportunities. Yes, there is plenty of opportunity here. But the whole system is rigged against us. The whole fucking system needs to come the fuck down. And I'm tired of white women talking about, you know, being scared of black men. Black men ain't did nothing to you. Y'all the ones that, 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 that produce serial killers and serial rapists and shit. Black men don't do that. Well, you know, after a while, we done been in this country. We tend to want to be like them. Some of us done went, went that way. But the mass majority of us don't do shit like that. That's all y'all. You don't clutch your damn purse like somebody wants something from you. And then you ride around here, you know, like you're entitled. You know, these motherfuckers really think this. This is what they think. Oh, we had y'all in slavery. That's all y'all will ever be is slaves to us. This motherfucker's actually thinking that. The worst thing that ever happened in history anywhere. Anywhere. On the planet was slavery. I'm not taking nothing from the Jews. I know for 20 years they, you know, they was killed in the concentration camps for 20 years. For 20 years. We was in slavery over 250 some years. And I'm talking about rape. If anything, I should clutch my purse every time I see a white man. You know, you ride around, <coughs> excuse me, ride around here like you entitled. Bitch, girl, you not entitled. Because you got a vagina just like I do. The only difference is I'm the mother of all civilization and you're not. That's the difference. And just like I said before in your Bible, thou shalt respect thy mother and thy father. The black man and the black woman is your mother and your father because you wouldn't even be here. Had it not been for the, the, the nut to come out my man's dick. Understand. I know some of y'all don't like the way I express myself, but that's just the way that I talk. I keep it real. Black people, we need to start supporting our own business. That's important. So we can build a Black Wall Street Part 2. That's what we need to do. We need to start supporting our community cultural centers. And if you go into a cultural center and they're not doing what you think is necessary to be done, well, you do it. Right now, we have the most richest black people that we ever had in our whole history being in this country. Why are, and we're so rich, why are there so many black people that's not eating? When this coronavirus came on, of course I was terrified because I knew it was already hard for some black folk. So you know it's gonna be even harder. So there's people not eating. There's older people alone in their motherfucking house. But we have the ability to build a black Wall Street. We had our own airport. We had our own dentistry. We had our own grocery stores. You know, at that time, the shoeshine business was a big thing. We had our own shoeshine situations. We had our own schools. Then segregation came along and fucked everything up and took all our money out of our community 
and went into other people's community. And from that day to this day, all our money is in other people's community. Meanwhile, we keep getting disrespected. Over and over and over and over and over again. We need to understand our money have power. For example, when they did the Black Wall Street thing, right? What happened was, of course, no white person went to jail during that. But all the black people ended up in these little camps. They called it, you know, the Black Holocaust time, right? And then they made them wear these little uh, white tags on their jacket, you know, when they came back to work because, hey, Ebony, because what happened... Uh, the white folks started because they ran all the black people off. And, and of course, all the black people was doing essential jobs. <laughs> right? Their own economy started collapsing. So white people were like, oh, no, we need these black folk. But the only way they can come in, they have to have a tag on them saying that they were from that particular area. So... They know our worth. They knew it that back then and they know it now. It's just we don't know it. And that's sad. That's sad. We don't know our own motherfucking worth. We run around here giving everybody, the Chinese, the Jews, the Arabs, every goddamn body, our money, that disrespect us. <laughs> But we won't give it to black folk unless they own a bar, you know, but we like to kick it. And we're not understanding because we're going to a black store and it might be a little more expensive, right? But you're not understanding. You got these big corporations, right, that he's in competition with. He can't put his prices at the same price as Walmart. He can't. He'll go out of business. He has to compete. That's called business. So the mom and pop store go off to the side because Walmart come in. And we all in Walmart getting this from motherfucking respected. Being followed around the goddamn store. Like we gonna steal something. Now some of us steal. That's true. But some of them steal too. Well, we ain't the only motherfuckers that steal. We need to understand about business. We need to be able to pay. If we so, you know, we balling now, right? We got all these fancy cars. We got the Benz and the Mercedes. We got all these pimped out clothes. And we got all this stuff that you ain't get from damn black person. You went and took, okay. First you go to work for a white person. And they paid you. Then, instead of taking your money... And put it in the black community. You give it right back to them. After you done work. <laughs> it makes no sense. And unfortunately. In our community. Most of the businesses are owned by. Arabs. And I already told you. They, they had their part in slavery too. Because you know they came over to Ethiopia. You know, what a garden of eating is, you know, when we first started populating the whole goddamn earth. They came over there and started taking people, you know. And then they, they put, just like white people, they put their religion on you here. Because, you know what? If I can control your God, I can control you. If I can control your God and what you believe spiritually, the most the most powerful being that the human being looks to for strength. If I can control that, I can control you. If I can control that, I can control you. 
That's why every time they come over to Africa and came to steal us, the first thing they did was strip us of our what? Spiritual practices. And then they make you. Hey, nothing that. Then they make you. Or they tell you that your religious or your spiritual beliefs <laughs> is paganistic. It's devil worshiping. That's what they tell you about your own religion. And we fell for it. Because we was like, oh, theirs must be, you know, God, theirs must be way more powerful than our God because our God wouldn't let us in this situation. That's stupid. Yeah. I know my auntie about to get mad at me, but I don't celebrate no Jesus. I don't celebrate Jesus. I celebrate a black God, a Ludomar. That's who I celebrate. Because in order for you to re get, in order for you to understand and appreciate power, then your God has to look like you. Period. If you, every time you kneel down on your knees and pray, you praying to a white God, what kind of power your ass going to have? None. None. Stop it. And I know, I know, I know it's going to be some Christians that's going to get at me and my messenger with all of their little Bible quotes and all of this. Uh-uh, I ain't, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I, I don't quit with that brainwashing shit a long time ago. I ain't on that. We need to celebrate our own God. We need to celebrate our ancestors because there's power in that. Period, people. We need to learn lessons about Black Wall Street. President Trump, he, he bad <laughs> with his punk ass. He bagged up off of that. Juneteenth stuff. At first, he was like, I'm going down there on Juneteenth. And then not only am I going, the, the, the place he want to go is the same place where the, the white dumbest burnt down 60 blocks. All owned by black, black people. They had airplanes. Just like right now. Over the protesters, they got airplanes with these things on the bottom of it, on the belly of it, right? And it's sending out signals to pick up on your, da on, on your cell phone data stuff. Trying to infiltrate. That's what they always do. Now, I know it's some good white folk. But we can't trust them. Because when it comes down to loyalty, <laughs> only reason that I, I think the only reason why they really got involved is because they start losing money. Let's be clear. Now everybody want to be inclusive. Talking about Hollywood. Every time we turn on the TV, we got to see a black man in a goddamn dress. That's the way he can get his start. He got to be in a dress. Or hooked up with a white girl. So now, they like, oh, well, we need to include more black people. What you going to do? Have one or two of us? You still going to put him in a dress when all this shit is over? Demasculating him? They did a show. Look, <laughs> true. Okay, they came up. They said the Bachelor. I don't even watch that shit. But they said the Bachelor, whatever. And you know, forty seasons or how many seasons they done had? They only had one black Bachelor throughout the whole thing. So they decided we we're, we're sorry. We're gonna bring more black people in. 
So they show a picture of a black man with no shirt on and a white man with no shirt on. And each man is, is holding a dog, right? The black man got a little bitty old dog. The white man got a big dog. We talking about subliminal motherfucking messages. Y'all better be clear. If that wasn't a subliminal message, then you need to go and look up the word subliminal message and find out what the fuck that shit is. Anyway, I just wanted to holler at y'all <laughs> and talk to y'all about the Black Wall Street and Juneteenth. Juneteenth is uh, uh, June 19th, right? That's when the slaves in Texas found out that they were free, although the uh, uh, Emancipation Proclamation was signed two years prior. And the motherfuckers, slave plantation owners in Texas wanted to get a, a one more or two more crops out the brothers. Before they let them know that they were free. Finally, some soldiers came in after two years and told them, oh, by the way, y'all been set free. And there was a big celebration, and that was on June 19th. And this is why we celebrate Juneteenth. So on June 19th, please, please stop and acknowledge our freedom. Because we was free over here in the north. But if we not free, if I if my people not free, I'm not free. That's the way that works. Thank y'all for listening to me this long. I love you. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye.